<coughs> Excuse me. I forgot what we were reading. <laughs> Mark chapter 11. Oh, well, that's Matthew. <laughs> chapter 11, 25 to 30. <laughs> Thank you. The Father revealed in the Son. At that time, Jesus says, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chose to reveal. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Then we go to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. May this reading fulfill your hearts today. Thank you. For those of you who are joining us and hearing this message from the radio broadcast, welcome. And for those of you who are viewing this on our website or our Facebook page, welcome to you also. We continue to go through our Believe series study on the fruits. We're looking at the fruits that should be evident if we are to be like Jesus in this world that we're living in. Uh, in the book, based on this series, Randy Frazee says that Gallup did a poll, so the 30 ideas that are talked about in the Believe series book, gentleness, which we're going to focus on today, came in dead last. Yeah, way, way, way down there. You see gentleness. Even if a person claims to be a Christian or non-Christian, the quality of gentleness seems to be a very rare and kind of evasive one in our culture right now. And, and here's the question that did most people in on this survey, was this question. Are you known as someone who raises their voice? And when they saw that question, they're like, ah. Oop. As a society and as a church, why are we so uptight? Like, what's our deal? Why are we so tense? Why are we so stressed out? Why is gentleness, like, we don't, we're like, what does that word even mean as we're talking about that? If Christ is in our lives, why aren't we the ones who are exceptionally gentle compared to those who would claim no allegiance to Jesus and could care less about God and faith and the Bible and church. Two illustrations. There's a story about George Washington where on one occasion he was fox hunting with a group of friends and one of the fields in which they were passing was bordered by a stone wall. And as Washington's horse jumped the wall, it knocked off a stone. One of his friends said, you're too big a man to bother with that because Washington actually had stopped the horse when he noticed the stone and fell. And here's what George Washington said back to the friend. He said gently, no, I am just the right size. A guide was taking a group of visitors to a factory, and, and one of the things he showed them was this, this giant steam hammer that could flatten a car. 
And then the guy put down a walnut, and he had the hammer come down and only broke the shell without hurting the meat inside. <laughs> Gentleness is perfect power under control. Let me throw that definition out there for you. Gentleness is perfect power under control. So how do we define gentleness? When Paul uses the word gentleness in Galatians 5, 22, listing all those fruits of the Spirit, he uses the word, the Greek word, protesis. And in Paul's time, this word was linked to the medical world, and, and it carried the idea of like a, like a mild medication. So you might call a gentle person as someone who is easy on your stomach. It's like, ah. Now, we all know how it feels to have a stomach that's not feeling so hot. And we all know what it's like to get around a person who literally, by their, just their pride, and maybe how they talk and carry themselves, they literally make you like, oh, man, you're making me sick, dude. Like, you make my stomach hurt. I'm not going to tell you, but I'm feeling this on the inside. Gentle on your stomach person is easy on our tummies, gentle, a gentle person. The King James translation translates this fruit of the Spirit as, as meekness in that translation, but in most newer English translations in the Bible, we have in, instead a translation of the word gentleness. The Greek word we just mentioned is found in all the references to the word gentle. But the problem here is that the English language, it's changed so much since the days of King James and Shakespeare. So the common di dictionary definition of meekness, if we go that direction, would be defined as deficient in spirit and courage. Meh. Oh, I want to be meek. I mean, who's in that line? So we want to be careful and instead, I think, go with the gentleness the more recent translation. A gentle person is not a weak person, but rather someone who is strong, secure, and mature. So in the biblical sense, when we talk about gentleness, do not let your brain go, that equals being weak, because I think we can kind of go there. Maybe with some of our young guys, gentle, if I'm gentle out on the field or wherever I'm at, and that means I'm weak and I, dude, like, really? Stay with me. Stay with me here. Gentleness is never self-important, but it's considerate. It's courteous. It's modest. You're willing to try and get something done when a job needs to be done. So we want to kind of unpack this gentleness, this fruit, and get it out of the negative and the weak thinking that we might have with that word. Going back to our scripture reading in Ephesians chapter 4 that was just read, talking about this unity that we can achieve with all humility and gentleness, with patience. There's another fruit that we touched on two, three weeks back. Showing these qualities, showing this kind of fruit. Paul urges us as God's chosen people who are holy and dearly loved to clothe ourselves. So, so it's like you put on this, this shirt, this jacket, or this garment with, that's like compassion, it's kindness, it's humility. You put on gentleness before you head out into the world. In 1 Peter 3, 15 through 16, I think I used these verses a few weeks back. When we talked about sharing our faith, we are to be prepared to give an answer to anyone, everyone who asks us for the reason for the hope that we have. But you don't like, boom, come in and slam them to the floor with your like response. It says, do this with, put on gentleness and respect when you're engaging this individual. Gentleness is not this, like, cowardly retreat from reality. So when I'm speaking and sharing today, be gentle and just avoid everything that's happening in the world because it's scary and it's yucky and let's just hang out here and be safe every Sunday. No. Like, we, we got to live, right? We're here. That's great. 
tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. and throughout your week, that's when the test comes. We, we face the adversity and the challenges in this culture. So in our living, you know, we cannot help coming into situations that brings conflict with other people. It's easy for us in, in our natural selves to just react and respond with, with anger, frustration, violence in our culture now, especially if we feel insecure about our position. Have you seen in the news the story about the little boy that fell into the moat with the gorilla? Now, you know, there's a bunch of opinions flying around, this and that and all the other. I mean, I'll say this, I have a four-year-old and a three-year-old boy. The gorilla, I'm, I'm sorry, is going to be done. I'm saving my son's life. But have you seen what people have said about the family and the mother? And they don't even know her. You want to talk about a lack of gentleness in our culture. Just stories like this that come up, you see how people just instantly react. And this is when I hate Facebook and Twitter and social media because strangers who are experts because they're at home on their couch on their phone know exactly what should have been done. And people are giving death threats to this mother. They're giving death threats to a mom. Complete lack of gentleness. I pray the people who are here today weren't doing that to her and any church in America and around the world for that matter. A lack of gentleness. You've just seen that reaction of anger and mm, instantly before people are thinking about what they're about to do and say nowadays. And then I love the passage we're looking at in Matthew chapter 11. As Jesus is sharing here more about himself, and he says in 28, verse 28 in chapter 11, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. I'm going to give you rest. I love Paul and the illustration of the, the yoke. And Jesus says, take that my yoke upon you, learn from me. I am gentle and I am humble in heart. Jesus saying, I am gentle and I am humble in heart. Heart. Jesus describing himself here. He, he shows his true greatness both in the midst of conflict and in the midst of his popularity here. Because his healings and his miracles are, they're bringing in the crowds, you know. He, he's being followed wherever he goes. I mean, imagine most people in this city hearing about this man Jesus is in town and everybody just heading down to the river because that's where he's been walking this morning. It's kind of that atmosphere. It's kind of that situation. Everybody wants to go to him. And they wanted him to be their king, but he refused because he knew the kind of king they wanted him to be. And he says, that's not why I've came. I didn't come here to be that type of king. I'm the king that's going to go to the cross. I'll show gentleness because gentleness is power under control. Jesus knew who he was, but he was gentle and he was humble. That can be kind of co contrast to some leaders today and, and teachers who op operate in the mindset of this. The louder I am, the more right I am, right? And I can fall into that. I'm like, why am I raising my voice? Why, why am I having to talk so loud about this? I'm now an expert because I'm louder than my wife is, you know? or the, the might makes right kind of thinking. It's not gentleness. Jesus' awareness of his power, think about this, it helped him, it enabled him to be gentle to those in need. He gently comes to the sinner and says, come to me, I'll make you whole. Because I am gentle and I am humble in heart. And my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Wow. So seeing the gentleness on display in the life of Jesus. And so to conclude, what about us? What difference does this make? You know, what am I supposed to do moving forward? Three, three thoughts here. One is this. We are thoughtful. When we have this fruit of gentleness, we're thoughtful people. Um, we take the time to assess the situation 
so that we can get the whole story. We don't move through life like a bull in a china shop, not caring about people along the way. We ask people, how are you doing? Ask someone today, look them in the eye and say, how are you doing? And don't let them do this. I'm good. Sometimes we need to just stop and look someone in the eye and say, how are you doing? And let them share. It might not be pleasant. Let them share. Show that gentleness to that person. Second, we are considerate. When we're in a position to make a decision, we consider the impact that has on other people. We study the people God has put into our lives, and you kind of watch and you, you look and see what kind of energizes those people. You find out what sets that person off. You find out what buttons not to push as you examine and see those people. Be considerate. Show gentleness. Show that fruit. And, and finally this. Everybody just kind of do inhale and exhale. One more time. We are calm. We are calm. There are times when passion and aggression are right and they're necessary, but there's also great strength in holding to your convictions but doing it with quiet confidence, okay? When we're approached by a rough and a heated, agitated person, we want to resist that temptation to fight fire with fire so that we can walk away if necessary to bring down the heat in that situation with that person, showing gentleness. We're thoughtful, we're considerate, and we're calm. Last fall, I was watching a show with my boys, and Henry, my oldest, there was a bad guy, the bad guy on the show, cartoon, I don't know what it was. He said, Daddy, he's a bucket dipper. I was like, what? And he'd been in preschool about a month. Daddy, he's a bucket dipper. I was like, Christina, what does this mean? She said, well, honey, there's bucket dippers and there's bucket fillers. We're teaching the children that when they say mean things to each other, when they act mean towards one another, they're kind of dipping out, taking away from that person. They're hurting that person. They're becoming a bucket dipper in what they say and what they choose. But when they say nice things, when they're thoughtful, when they're considerate, when they calm down and not act out and say and do mean things, they, they fill that person up. They fill their bucket. And so in our family, from time to time, we say, don't be a bucket dipper. Be a bucket filler. What about you? And what about me? If, if we want to know the true measure of our gentleness, you know what you need to do? Ask someone else what they see in you. Ooh! Ask someone. Don't ask yourself. You're going to give yourself a high mark. I, I'm, you know, if I'm grading myself on this, oh, I'm a B plus, maybe an A when it comes to the fruit of gentleness. Get outside of yourself. Ask someone else who sees you, who is with you, who's doing life with you in some way. Gentleness, as we're reminded in Galatians 5.22, it's a fruit. It is external. Fruit doesn't grow on the inside of most of these trees. We see it on the outside of the plant. It's visible so we can grab it. And everyone will be eating our fruit when they spend time with us. If it is sour, they're going to know it. If it is sweet, they will know it as well. With Christ in us, we can be gentle. We can, we can display and show and operate with this fruit that is desperately needed in the world today, gentleness. And so my prayer is that for myself and for all of us here, as we stay connected and abide with Jesus, as the Holy Spirit empowers us and gives us the ability to cultivate this fruit, gentleness, 
And the thing is, is at the end of the day, don't take the credit for it. Give it to God as people see the gentleness in your life. Be thoughtful, be considerate, and be calm. Jesus is our model when it comes to gentleness. Be a bucket filler in showing gentleness to others. Don't be a bucket dipper. Be gentle, because we need it now more than ever. Let's pray together. Lord, it's a tall task with this particular fruit of the Spirit that is evident in the life of your Son, and we, Lord, are to reflect that in our own lives as well. And so, Lord, may we stay close to you. May you challenge us, shape, and mold us so that we might have this fruit, so that it might be evident. And so as people taste of this, will it be a sour taste in their mouths or will it be a sweet taste, this fruit of gentleness? May we be those type of men and women. May we be those type of young people. May we be those type of children in this world. Jesus, thank you for your heart, which is gentle and humble towards us sinners. Incredible. What a, what, a, what a powerful truth. What a, I pray an empowering truth that is when we get a chance to, Jesus, know your heart, which is, in a sense, your Father's heart for us. Lord, help us to be bucket fillers and not bucket dippers. May we be gentle. May we have that fruit. Amen. Amen. You may stand for the closing. We're going to be appreciating our teachers downstairs following the service, coffee hour going on as well. So be a part of that. Let's all go down and show some gentleness and take it out with you out here to Clinton and wherever you go this week. Lord, thank you for the Holy Spirit's presence here and for the Holy Spirit's power to produce in us these fruits of the Spirit. Being like Jesus, a task, Lord, that we cannot accomplish through our own efforts in our own desires, only by staying close and connected and in fellowship with you, Lord, can that be a reality. May that be true of all here today and all who may hear this message in the days to come. Bless your church. Bless your people here today, Lord. We ask it in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son. And in the name of the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. Amen.